doing it on my phone. <laughs> I'm, I'm usually on the computer, but it suddenly decided to die on me before um, before I was meant to call in. So, <laughs> and congratulations on the film. I really, really enjoyed it. It's just such a heartwarming um, watch, and you're you're both um, great in it. Um, first of all, I just wanted to touch on the theme um, that. Jackie's character uh, has that uh, Jackie Weaver's character has that's kind of at the heart of the film that kind of fam familial you know, acceptance and then becomes celebration um, even because I think it's something that a lot of us as LGBTQ people can really um, relate to. I'm just wondering what what resonated um, with it um, about that um, with it with you with each of you. Oh my God, this film. There you go. Do you want me to go first, just so you can? We can... Yeah, do, do you, are, are you happy to go first, Jackie? Yeah, sorry, I'm like being a mom and I'm worrying now. Okay, uh, yes. Um, well, exactly that uh, aspect is what really um, attracted me to the project, which is that as LGBTQ people, we often have to choose our own families. I mean, I feel like I was really blessed with, you know, a mom and a dad who always embraced everything about me. And I mean, even as a gay person, I'm on the sort of weirdo, you know, end of the spectrum, if you will, as a comedian and, a, and, and an entertainer. I mean, you know, I mean, just look at me, but, um, yeah, it's just a really important thing. And a lot of people, you know, during this process have asked us to sum up the movie in just a few words. And I just always say that I feel like love always triumphs, you know, like love always wins out. And that's why I think the movie works, you know, because mm -hmm. we all go through drama and, you know, people come and go, but ultimately, you know, love is what's going to win. Yeah. yeah. Um, Maya, how about for you? Yeah. What's the question, honey? So um, really the, the thing that's just kind of at the heart of the film, um, Jackie Weaver's uh, character's journey as um, a mother who comes to kind of accept and then, and then kind of celebrate. But that idea of um, the importance, I guess, of familial acceptance. But then there's also chosen family as as Jackie mentioned as well but were, were they themes that kind of resonated with you yes yes um because there have been moments in my life where um I felt like all of my friends were much nicer and more of a family to me than I felt my own family was not to say that I have a bad family or anything um but back then I felt like there was so much that was just misunderstood, you know, but that's my own situation. You know, for some people's situation, their families just don't like them for whatever reason. So they have to go and get a whole new family. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and the other thing that I, is really striking about the film, especially over the last few months, because all of our uh, queer bars and clubs have been closed pretty much everywhere around the world. And um, it's almost a, a bit of a celebration of, of one, isn't it? Because so many scenes are in this bar and it's very important to a lot of the characters. And mm -hmm. uh, how important have kind of queer spaces, maybe like the bar in the film, been to both of you over the years? Well, I mean... Sorry. No, go ahead, honey, go ahead. Well, I think that it's so sort of ironic that the, a big part of the story is this struggling gay bar, you know, trying to remain open and do whatever it takes. And you have to be creative and, you know, really think outside the box because that's what so many, you know, businesses, you know, regardless of what they are, are going through right now. So it's kind of a perfect message for right now. And you just have to keep fighting and you have to stay with it. And, you know, I mean, gay bars are going to come and go. Obviously, it's really sad when a historical one closes or, you know, there's one that's personally uh, important to you because, you know, it was your place. But um, this is the world we live in and you have to kind of roll with the punches. And I hate to say it, but within 
you know, I don't want to lump everybody together, but within the gay community, there really is this tendency for like, you know, a hunger for new, new, new. So, you know, it's tough. But, it's uh, true. And I hate it so much because I'm so old school and traditional with everything. I'm a 90s baby. You know, like the music that I listen to and everything. There's some good new artists and, you know, like they're, they're good, you know, but I normally go back to all of my older artists that I knew from the 90s, like Whitney Houston or Brandy or Monica, Aaliyah, you know, all of those is what I listen to. I miss like Club Arena, you know, that was my favorite club to go to. And it's not even around anymore. Donut Time isn't around anymore. So yeah, it's, it's sad to me. And you mentioned all the artists that you love. We, we talked about that last time we met, which was five years ago in London to talk about Tangerine. So, so it's a while ago. Um, and I know that music and singing is really important to you, um, Maya, but tell us about that aspect of, of this film, because we get to hear you sing quite a bit in the movie. I was excited to, to sing in this film. And, you know, um, there were songs that we did, like, as groups, you know, like me, um, Joan, and Tequila. <laughs> and those boys can sing. They really can. I'm trying to remember the song that we did together. Um, what was that song called? I, I can't even think of it, but the process of filming it in the studio, I went first, because I'm the highest, I handle all the high parts. And um, Alistair, who plays Joan, has a, a stage voice, because he's used to um, singing on stage, so his voice is really, really big. And see, my voice is very light. And when he opened his mouth and he sang and he did his part, I said, oh no, hell no. This bitch is not gonna out sing me. Let me go back and redo my part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it was, it was that going on. Cause they're, they're talented. I loved working with them and we helped each other out in the studio like, okay. So hit this note like this, or breathe like this, and then let that note go. You know, like, I just, I miss all of that. I think that's what I miss most um, outside of being quarantined. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations on that aspect. It's great to hear you sing again. Um, Thank and you. And Jackie, um, your character is uh, a, a drag mother, um, and I'm sure you've, you've been a, a drag mom in, in real life, probably, and a drag daughter. And you maybe talk a little bit about the importance of that experience and maybe what you enjoy about being a, a drag mother? Well, uh, yes. I mean, most drag queens have a drag mother and a lot of drag queens have drag daughters. I mean, it's just like, you know, you need help. Who's gonna, you know, there's things that you need to be told. Trim your eyelashes. Nobody wears a full eyelash. You know, you need... <laughs> That's true. You've got a fat face. You need a bigger wig, bitch. You know, so yes. <laughs> find loving advice like that. So, you know, and I think that I feel like, you know, there are versions of that in every community. And, um, you know, the world, when I first started doing drag over 30 years ago, the world was a different place. You couldn't just go on the internet and look up a makeup tutorial or just... Where do I find, you know, shoes for my big man feet, you know? So now it's a little more mainstream and thanks to technology, people can really find out anything. But back in the day, it was like, where do I find, you know, you'd be backstage and people would be like, where did you get those lashes? Or, you know, where do you buy jewelry? And, you know, where can I find, you know, just stuff like that. So. I just feel like you need to be a generous person and um, give of yourself. And I'm always sharing tips, even on social media now. I'm like, look what I found. Here's where you can get it, you know? And not to ruin her street cred, but Bianca Del Rio, the biggest bitch in the world, she is the most generous person. Whenever I'm backstage, she's like, get over here, let me fix that, you know, wig. <laughs> Of course, it's always, you know, a backhanded compliment. Or I would be like, we're going to get this makeup, and the next day she'll bring me a box of the makeup. So 
I just think that most drag queens are naturally maternal and generous and kind. You know, there's, there's a bit of a, um, you know, people think that it's all drama and that we're all, you know, we all hate each other and it's all, you know, it's really not true. We're just a big family. And there's the occasional bitch that we don't like, but they remain nameless. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Maya, was this your first experience of, of drag? Yeah. Doing the film? Yeah. How, how did you find it? The, um, the, the drag aspect of the, the role. And did you get any tips from Jackie? <laughs> okay, so how did I get the role? No, well, um, well, or, or just bit, you know, that, that aspect of, you know, the, the drag, because you, you, you haven't had any experience of sort of doing a drag oh, show. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, all of the girls, my phone just keeps giving me that low battery warning. I don't know if it keeps cutting out my signal, but it's, it's on the wireless charger. And I guess that's not catching up with what we're doing. But anyways, um, everybody was extremely supportive, who really coached me a lot. Because Jackie wasn't there all the time. Jackie had to leave a lot. Um, because Jackie was doing work, like, everywhere. <laughs> but Chris, the makeup artist, um, she's trans, and she does drag. And she was there to coach me and tell me, okay, so when you walk in these heels, make sure you just, just poke your ass out, you know, and, <laughs> and walk. Keep those legs straight. We're not trying to look like a horse, you know. Um, and pace yourself. I think that was the hardest part for me with those platform heels. I just, oh. Because I don't wear platform heels. Um, I normally do like a pointy type of heel, you know, the really classy one. Or I do like the one that's like on the floor. And then there's like the heel. You know, I do those heels. Because I'm already 5'9". I don't need to be any taller. But dancing in those heels. And I can't tell you how many close calls I had where my ankle just went to the side like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, but we and, were all supportive of each other. There were some laughs, but we supported each other. And one of um, Jackie Weaver's character's ideas uh, when she comes into the club is to have people sing rather than lip sync. And um, Jackie, I wonder, what's your sort of take on that sort of uh, drag queen singing rather than lip syncing? And I don't know, is one, one better than the other? other or? <laughs> well, listen, this is a slippery slope. First of all, I'll say, you know, I've done drag for over 30 years and I've never lip synced in my life. I always sing live. It's sort of my, you know, what I'm most famous for, to be perfectly honest. And I mean, granted, I rewrite the songs and make them absolutely filthy, but I can sing the fuck out of them. And um, so it was kind of ironic that I would play this character who only lip synced and actually kind of bristled at the fact of, you know, live singing. And I even have to lip sync a number in the movie, which was really fun, actually. But like I said, I don't want to put anybody down, but there's a part of me that just feels like we need to evolve and not everybody can sing. So I'm not, but I can't imagine a comedian going to some club and handing the DJ, you know, a CD of someone else's comedy material and saying, push play, I'll just move my lips. And that's where you have to be creative and do an interesting song, know all the words, add some shtick, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't lip sync the number one song that the DJ has probably already played three times. Do a Dolly Parton song from 40 years ago. Do a little known mm -hmm. live version of a song, you know, that maybe no one's heard. That's the way to get their attention, in my humble opinion. <laughs> uh, and just funny, I think we have to mention um, Jackie Weaver, who's brilliant in the film. She's always great. You, you both have some um, good scenes with her. Just tell me a little bit about um, getting to work opposite her on the movie. I just think she's adorable. Like, it's her personality. She's just, she's, she's so motherly, you know, uh, naturally, you know, <laughs> and so professional all the time. She never gets upset about anything. If she does, you, you'll just, you'll never know. Um, and she's always prepared. I, I liked working with her. And uh, Jackie, how about you? Jackie and Jackie. <laughs> oh, she was amazing because, you know, you are walking onto the set and you're thinking to yourself, okay, you're about to do, you know, the first scene we did was me out of drag, uh, sitting at the park bench. And it was sort of the heaviest scene 
and it was just me and her. And I was like, okay, this is a two-time Academy Award nominee who is in one of my favorite iconic movies of all time, you know, Picnic at Hanging Rock. And I was nervous, but the moment you make eye contact, she just makes you feel comfortable and safe and supported. And she's just an amazing person. And I love her. Yeah. Um, right, well, I think we've probably had our, our time. I could uh, talk to you for a couple of hours about this film, but it's great to chat to you um, both. And uh, congratulations, congratulations on the movie. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks.